So you might remember that a few months ago I did a video entitled 10 books under 150 pages. I am a massive fan of the short book. I feel like the person who writes a phenomenal short book has done a pretty impressive job, especially one that's under 150 pages. So I thought I would do another 10 books under 150 pages book recommendations. But without further ado, let's get into the books. The first book I'm going to show you is The Murders in the Rue Morgue by Edgar Allan Poe. Now this is actually the only Poe I've ever read, um, which is his Dupin stories. Dupin was a French detective that he created and is actually one of the inspirations for Sherlock Holmes. In fact, if you're a fan of Sherlock Holmes, then you'll notice intertextuality and little references to Dupin here and there. Like Sherlock Holmes are told from the perspective of Dupin the detective's companion, although he is unnamed throughout the series. But they're a lot of fun, especially if you're a Sherlock Holmes fan, and I highly, highly recommend checking out this little collection which is published by Atlantic Books and is a mere 132 pages with multiple mysteries within. Next up is a recent read for me and one that I absolutely adored and that is Wait by Jeanette Winderson. This is another book from the Canongate Myth series. I believe I featured some from that series in my last video of this nature and this is a retelling of the myth of Atlas and his encounter with Heracles and how Heracles basically gives him the day off from holding the weight of the world on his shoulders to assist him in one of his 12 tasks. Now this book is just stunning, it's stunningly written, the characterization is beautiful and the messages and the thoughts it provokes in your mind are wonderful as well. It is honestly one of my new favourite books. It's exactly 150 pages. Now the next two are books that are both under 150 pages but I would recommend reading alongside one another and the first one is a collection of poetry by Ted Hughes and it's his poetry collection Crow. This is published by Faber and is 89 pages. All of these poems are told from the perspective of this crow as he witnesses the kind of creation of the world, um, creation myths from the bible, from mythology, historical events, as he's there kind of watching over everything being quite sinister and this is very dark but beautiful poetry. And this year a book based on this book of poetry came out which is Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter, which I've done a full review of, so I'll link down below. And this is also published by Faber, and again, one of my new favourite books. This is 113 pages and tells the story of a family, two sons and a father, who have recently lost their wife and their mother and are trying to cope with their grief. Enter Crow who becomes not just a witness but a participant in their grief. It's very poetical, although a prose novel, and just stunning. I would highly recommend checking out both of these. Now the next book I want to feature is a children's book and I couldn't resist because it's one of my favourites and it's Roald Dahl's The Fantastic Mr Fox. If you haven't read this book already, what are you doing with your life? It's 82 pages, big print, with illustrations. Go and read it now. <laughs> it is so good. It is one of, if not possibly, my most favourite of Roald Dahl's children's books and it's so funny and it's about this family of foxes who are trying to survive <laughs> and they like to steal things from farmers and it's just really witty and really funny and the character of the foxes are just fantastic and I reread and reread this book as a child so I think it is perfect for adults and children alike. Next I want to mention a play and that is Ali Smith's The Seer. This was a gift from my wonderful friend Jen and I'm I'm so glad she gifted it to me because again one of my favourite books I've read this year and this is also published by Faber, You're Doing Good Faber and it's 103 pages and it's very much a crossing the fourth wall play, I can't imagine what it would have been like to see it performed, probably amazing but it's also just as good in the written form and I'm someone that far prefers usually seeing plays but I think this one has so much to offer even just as a script and it is about a couple who are sitting in their house when they hear a knock on the door and it is the woman's sister. So they invite her in, despite knowing that the woman is lying and isn't actually her sister. But I couldn't do this video without mentioning some classical literature, so I have two to show you. One is a, originally an epic poem, but this is a prose translation and it is Apollonius of Rhodes's Jason and the Golden Fleece, published by Oxford Royal Classics and translated by Richard Hunter. This is one of my favourite pieces of classical literature. I wrote my undergraduate dissertation on it. It has majorly influenced a lot of my studies and research and just interests, as well as really inspiring my passion for classical literature. As you can see, this is quite a beat up copy. It has 
quite a few tabs in it. I've read this over and over again. And it tells the story of Jason and the Argonauts who set out to the island of Colchis to get the Golden Fleece on the orders of King Peleus. They experience lots of adventures on their way. Heracles is part of their crew for a while and when they reach Colchis, Jason meets Medea and they fall in love through Eros's intervention. Much drama. <laughs> Very classic Greek myth. But secondly I have some ancient poetry to share with you and that is the works of Sappho. This is translated by Mary Bernard and this edition is published by the University of California Press absolutely stunning, love this edition, so beautiful. And the collection itself is actually 100 pages and Sappho's poems are very short, a lot of them survive quite fragmentary, um, but they are beautiful nonetheless, even though we don't have everything she wrote you just get an amazing sense of the kind of accomplished woman she was. Her, she writes love elegy but she's also quite satirical sometimes and she is the only Greek female writer that has survived till today so she is well worth reading. Next is a book I don't have a physical copy of and it is The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie by Muriel Spark. This has also been adapted into play form as well and I actually performed in the play at high school which was quite a long time ago now. I was Sandy and The Prime of Miss Jean Brodie is a novel set in Scotland and Miss Jean Brodie teaches it in all girls school and she kind of forms this little clique of female students under her and she becomes their kind of mentor. She's a bit wacky, she's actually a massive fascist and she's not actually the greatest person but, but she's also quite an extravagant woman for the time and quite exciting and really interesting to read about although maybe not somebody you really want to know and it's about her relationship with these girls and um, how she influences them good and bad. There is actually a film adaptation as well starring Maggie Smith, yes, Professor McGonagall as Miss Jean Brodie when she was a bit younger. So yeah, I'd highly recommend checking that out. And now the next one is a bit of a cheat because it's 153 pages. But I swear if you got a different edition from mine it's probably under 150 so I'm just including it. And it is Chalky by John Wyndham. I have the Penguin edition here. I believe this is the shortest of John Wyndham's books. It's a 1960s science fiction novel which follows this young boy who basically gets inhabited by an alien called Chalky in his brain. And the people around him don't know whether it's an imaginary friend, whether it's a mental health condition, but he, he knows. It's just an alien, just, you know, finding out about the world through this young boy's head. And the plot isn't particularly action-packed. It's told from the perspective of his father, who's just utterly confused at the whole situation. And it's a lot of fun, and I would highly recommend it. Those are the 10 books I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you got some good recommendations. If you have any particularly short books that you'd like to recommend to me, please do. And until next time, guys, happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye!